egotistical. I have more videos of me, the better. My big ego. Mr. G. Matthew, right? Over and in, right? Not over and out. We're here. Today's lesson is on rational equations. So before we get to the learning packet, we're just going to do a little work beforehand so we know the steps we're going to follow. So find all <laughs> excluded values for the solution in step one. When you solve a rational equation, there are some answers that are not allowed. So you could do all the algebra correct and the answer at the end is still wrong and you cross it out. So why would that be? Why would there be excluded values? So what we need to do is find all zeros of the denominator. So, because we're dealing with fractions, uh, we have excluded values. Now, why is there something that's excluded? Why can't it be allowed? Well, we're going to find all the zeros of the denominator. Any zero of the denominator is excluded. But why is that? And that's because a zero in the denominator means the number is undefined. Do you know that some understand this kind of, but then they forget. So if I ask, hey, what is 0 divided by 2? Or what's 2 divided by 0? And they get confused. Are you someone who gets confused by those two possibilities? Like what's 0 divided by 2? Or what's 2 divided by 0? Do I? Can I make it crystal clear? So if 0 is in the numerator, the answer is 0. If zero is in the denominator, the answer is undefined. So when you're dividing, you're saying to yourself, how many of the numerator are in the denominator? How many zeros are in two? And the answer is zero. But the other way around, how many twos are in zero makes no sense. So zero represents something that's nothing, right? It's that unique number. It represents nothing and yet it's something. So is it impossible to understand when you have nothing, how many twos are in nothing? That's not something that's mathematically, you know, computable. So two divided by zero is undefined, but zero divided by two is zero. Are we clear on this? So we that when you get to that point in life in math, we're good. Now there's a special name for these excluded values. And I always pronounce it wrong. And I have to remind myself how to do it. So the excluded solutions are called and that's a new vocabulary word. Now unfortunately I'm not good enough with video so on the video they won't see what I'm doing but you will. But you'll hear it do you know if you ever forget how to pronounce something? Do you know what you can do? Do you know that? Like, do you ever get to a word and you're unsure how to pronounce it and you don't want to feel embarrassed by that? That you can... Did I spell it wrong? X, I forgot an R. X. There it is. Have you heard that word before? I spelled it wrong. That's why there's an A in there. Extra. But I always think of the word extra when I think of it. Like there are extra solutions that don't work because they make the answer undefined. So here, look. Let's see if we can hear it. <coughs> Turn it on loud. So what do, you, what do you think it is, Michael? Extraneous. Extraneous. That's why I think it is. Did you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Like I think of it, because I think of the word extra, I think if it's extraneous, extraneous, ex... Extreme. Extreme? Extraneous. Isn't that pretty? That's Google. Let's try it again. Extraneous. Look at that. Extraneous. 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 
I never think of EX being like ick. Do you ever think of that? Like, do you know, like, have you ever seen the, this is called phonetic, right? Is this phonetically how you'd say it? Ick. Would you ever think that? Learn to pronounce. I wonder what that means. Extraneous. Ah, what does the word extraneous mean? It means those are solutions that are excluded. And why are they excluded? Why are they excluded? Because the answer would be what? Undefined. When is something undefined? When we have a zero in the denominator. So the first step is, when we look at an equation, is we find the zeros of the denominator, and we know they are excluded. And that, what do we call that word if they're excluded? Extreme. Yes. Is that a new word for today? Of course. Yes. You know I'm a Sesame Street fan, right? That's the word of the day. Right there. Remember that? Yeah, those are good times. Remember Cookie Monster? Like, and he have to eat that many cookies, right? The number of the day and how many cookies he's going to eat, right? Remember that? Good. Now they don't do that anymore. Did you know that? Someone said, oh, you shouldn't have that because you shouldn't eat that many cookies. Bad role model. Yeah, for kids. So now they don't do how many cookies he's going to eat. Now it's like something completely else. Someone got mad that it's like it'd be like 17 and Cookie Monster would be eating 17 cookies. And I guess that's, you know, little kids, that's not, not good to eat 17 cookies. All right. All right. That's just step one. Step two. Step two is we're going to make all denominators the same. So we're going to make common denominators. Step three, we're going to solve only the numerators. See, if the denominators are the same, then to solve it, I only have to look at the numerators once I've set it up, and that's it. And then, of course, be careful that solutions are not, what's the new word? Extraneous. Yes, extraneous. Ick, right? I said ick. Extra. All right. Now we're going to go to our learning packet. And obviously, the only way we learn how to do something is by practicing together correctly. You know, if you practice a lot and it's always wrong, you're not getting better. <laughs> we have to practice correctly, right? And have the great attitude to it's okay to keep practicing. And then what you don't practice, you forget, right? So you have to find times to continually practice something to be really good at it. All right, are you ready? So take out your learning packet, and here we go. So, so we talked about using a least common denominator. They talk about proportions. There might be questions here that deal with proportions. Sometimes what happens is, in your past, some math teacher told you to cross multiply to solve something, correct? And they didn't, maybe they didn't explain really mathematically what you're doing when you cross multiply. <laughs> and what happens is whenever you have two fractions beside each other, your brain first thinks to cross multiply. What's one half plus one third? Oh, I better mu cross multiply. What's three quarters times two thirds? Oh, I better cross multiply, right? And so if you understand it, great. So a proportion means one fraction is equal to uh, another fraction. And when you have that situation, a technique you can use is cross-multiplying. But I want to understand the math behind cross-multiplying so that when you're adding or subtracting, you don't cross-multiply. It's this scenario, right? So when we call it a proportion, we have one rational equaling a another rational. But they're just one and one. That's it. One equaling another one. So mathematically, what's happening is we're taking the denominator and they're saying the inverse of dividing by x is to multiply by x. And the inverse of dividing by x subtract 6 is to multiply by it. So when I choose, so this is a proportion. So when we have a proportion, we don't need to make the denominators the same. We can then do this by uh, multiplying both sides. So first, we're going to write down the extraneous solutions or the excluded values to double check. 
So when I look at the denominators, what are the zeros of the denominator? So the first denominator, the zero is six, and for the second one, it's just zero. So I'm aware that x cannot equal six or zero for this equation. Do you know why? Because you can't have a zero in the denominator, it makes it undefined. So when I do the math, if this actually matches, I have to cross it out, and it's not a solution. So it can't match the excluded ones. All right. So instead of dividing by x, what can you do to both sides? Multiply by x. Now, when I multiply, I want you to notice the right side, the x's strike out, and I'm left with 4. And then when I multiply x times a fraction, think of it as x over 1. We multiply the tops and the bottoms together. So in essence, it's 7x over x subtract 6. Now, instead of dividing by x subtract 6, we're going to multiply both sides by it. And again, the x subtract 6 then would strike out. And what I'm left with is 7x equals 4x subtract 24. Now, what's left is a simple linear equation. To solve a linear, we need to combine like terms and get x by itself. So what would be a good step here? Subtract 4x to both sides. I'll put the answer up here. So 7 take away 4 is 3x. We still have a negative 24. What's a good step to solve for x here? Divide by 3. So what is x equal? Now check. Is negative 8 one of my excluded solutions? Nope. So that's a good answer, and we're done. Any equation, you can double check if you did it right. We're not going to do this every time. But how could you double check if you wanted to make sure? Back to the beginning, right? So I know 4 divided by negative 8 is negative 1 half. Negative 8 take away 6 is negative 14. And 7 over negative 14 that they match. They're both negative 1 half. So if you have that skill to quickly go back and simplify in your head, it's a good way to make sure it's okay. Some of you finish the question and don't want to know if you did it wrong because that means you'd have to do it over again. So I want you to be able to get to the end and know that you did it correctly. And of course, I'm going to give you the answer key so you can check that always. Two. Two is called a proportion again. Why is this a proportion? We have one rational equaling a another rational. So we're going to do this in one step. So we're going to take the denominator. So instead of dividing by 2a plus 1, we're going to multiply by 2a plus 1. So the inverse of dividing is to multiply. Not only that, because we're so good, we're going to take the other one, the inverse of dividing by a minus 1, a minus 8 is to multiply. So instead of dividing, I'm multiplying, and then I simplify. So what I notice is that a minus 8, they strike out. 2a plus 1 and 2a plus 1, they divide out. And then a mistake you could make is that you don't distribute properly, right? That 3 belongs to both. So 3 times 2a and 3 times 1. And then again, these struck out 7 times a and 7 times negative 8. So just be careful that you distribute properly. Now it's a linear and you combine like terms and solve it. So if I'm going to combine like terms, I'm going to subtract 6a. Do you know what else you're going to do to combine like terms? Is you're going to add what number? So I'm going to treat you, because you guys are good mathematicians, I already know it and see it, that you can do multiple steps at once and it's not against the rules. You know what I mean? We can learn to be efficient when the math is simple. So 6a and negative 56 and 56, I have 59 is equal to a. Oh, you know what we didn't do at the beginning? And it's shame on me. What are the excluded values of a? What's the zero of the first denominator? 
8, you can do this. What's the 0 of the second denominator? Negative 1 half. So be aware, is 59 a good answer? Yes. If that answer matched the excluded values, then this would be called a extraneous solution, and we cross it out. All right, try number three. I'm going to in the mood to call somebody to help me. I feel like everybody should feel like they're important on YouTube. So I'm not going to make this mistake again. The first step is put down the excluded values, the ones that are cannot be. Genesis, do you know the two solutions that are bad solutions for R, the excluded values? Right, and that, it shouldn't be confusing. But when you have a monomial, that means you're not adding or subtracting, right? Just one term. And it's a variable. Like it can't be a constant. Then that zero is always zero. So a monomial is going to give you the answer zero. The only way it wouldn't, if there was no letter, right? No variable, then it wouldn't. All right. Let's see what we can do next. Hmm. Let's see. All right, Marilyn, what should I do first? I love it. So I'm going to multiply R to both sides. And that way the R's divide out. Do you know that R times R is R squared? And again, it would be easy to make the mistake that R would multiply both, right? But R has a denominator of 1, and the rule is you multiply the tops and the bottoms. What would you do next, Marilyn? And we're doing that because if I want to undo dividing, I multiply it. Notice that R subtract 1 divides out. And Marilyn, what am I left with? Call you out one. And it's 4R, and next one would be? Excellent. You, you remember to distribute, right? All right. Dan is going to take over. Dan, I want you to recognize, I'm going to support you. You ready? I want you to recognize that this is not a linear equation. <laughs> I want you to recognize what's left over. The degree of it is what number? And what do we call it when it's a degree of 2? What type of equation is it? Or I can help you. Thank you. You look in? Okay. This is called a quadratic equation. When the degree is 2, it's called a... That's right. If the degree is 1, it's a linear. Do we solve a linear and a quadratic in the same way? Good. I want you to recognize that when it's a quadratic, the first step is to make it equal to zero. And we want to keep the quadratic term, you know, the power term, we want to keep it positive. So I don't want to subtract r squared. I want to keep it positive. So r squared is going to stay. Do you know how we can quickly make this equal to zero? Now, what you're thinking of, hopefully, is that there are three ways, and we want the first way. To solve a quadratic, we want to factor. If we can't, then we have to do the story of the boy, right, and the dance, or we gotta complete the square, but we want to factor. Are there two numbers that multiply to four and add to negative four? And it's repeated, isn't it? So how would I solve that?
and the square root of 0 is? And it's not plus or minus. Do you know why I don't put down plus or minus even though it's a quadratic? Because 0 is not positive and 0 is not negative. And then what's the last step? So what's the answer? Now what do I do at the very end once I have a solution? Is it good? Awesome. Number four. Here we go. Lizbeth. Step one. Do you know what it is? What is it? Find the excluded values. Now, they're not called extraneous unless my answer matches that. So right now we're finding the excluded values. And if I do the work and it matches, then that answer is called extraneous. All right, Lizbeth, what do I do first to solve it? What are the excluded values? So I'm glad you did that. So the correct answer for m subtract 2, the 0 is 2. And then we just said this, didn't we? That a monomial gives you what? 0. But what's different about this monomial compared to the one we just did in number 3? So if it's just a constant, there is no 0 that comes from it. So in other words, if I took the denominator and made it equal to 0, could you solve that? Is there anything that could make that bottom zero? Because it's always three, it will never be zero. There is no zero when it's a constant. So the only excluded value is two. All right, let's see if we can solve this. Richard, what would you do to solve this? Let's do that. So we're going to multiply three to both sides. And I know that three times eight is... 24. What am I going to do next? So we're going to multiply both sides by m subtract 2. Now, Richard, I asked you because I know how good you are. Do you know what I should do next in terms of the left side? Are you going to be careful? What's m subtract 2 times m plus 3? Yeah, I like that. So m squared, they're simple, aren't they? So m times m is m squared. Add the numbers. That's 1m. And then negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. What type of equation is this? A quadratic. And when I solve a quadratic, you have to make it equal to? Is it? How do I do that? So what's negative 6 subtract 24? Then what will you do? Is it a simple trinomial? Then let's just factor it. What two numbers match? They multiply to negative 30, and they combine to positive 1. So negative 5 and positive 6. So what are the solutions to this equation? So what are the zeros here? 5 and negative 6. What am I going to check for? Are any of those an excluded value? So both are good solutions, and it's done. Number five. Evelyn, how am I going to start this? So what are the excluded values for y? Is there any other one? So we just learned that the constant doesn't have a, a zero. What would you do next, Evelyn? I'm going to do that right now. So if I multiply both sides by 3, I'll do this in two steps. Make sure you put parentheses because the parentheses will remind you that when you multiply times 3, it goes to both. Yes? What else will you do? I will, but what else are you going to multiply both sides by? So we multiplied by 3. What else would we multiply by? If I want to undo dividing by y plus 5, how do I undo dividing? Is to multiply both sides by what? Y plus 5. Can you see that first step? And I get it. That some would say, why don't you just cross multiply, right? Are we cross multiplying like way back in the way back, way back? I just want to make sure that you understand the math you're doing. 
that when you cross multiplying, you are undoing dividing, right? One step at a time. But you're just doing it as one step. But you see the math. And you understand that this is the scenario. One fraction, one fraction equal. All right, now we can distribute. Go for it, Evelyn. Uh, 3y. All right, 3y. Excellent. How about the left side? Excellent. All right, Nancy, what type of equation is this called? So what I want you to recognize, and I'm glad you answered it, is that the degree of this is what number? Two. two. So whenever it's a degree of two, what name do we call this? It's called a. So when it's a degree of one, it's called linear. A degree of two is called quadratic. All right? Now we've done them two in a row, right? And we said two in a row, we said, and we can go back on the video. What's the name of it? Quadratic. What's the name of it? Quadratic. What's the name of it? Right? Three in a row. Quadratic. Now the next. Why does it even matter? I don't care what name you call it. But we know the name of it. We know how to solve it. And if it's a quadratic, we solve it different than a linear. So a quadratic, we're going to make equal to zero. You ready? Now when I do that, do you recognize the power term is y squared? I want that to be positive. Is it positive right now? It stays where it is. It's like the king or queen. It's like, it's the power, right? It gets to stay. Everything else has to move to it, right? How do I bring the y's together? I know what 5 take away 3 is, correct? How would I bring the 24 and have it join up? What would I do? And there's nothing to join it with, right? So it's just subtract 24. I want to factor this. If I can't, then I have to do something else. I want you to look carefully. Can you factor what you see there, Nancy? I can help you if you want the help. Hmm? Okay, so what I recognize is I need two numbers that multiply to what number? And it's important that 24 is negative. And you know what that tells me? They're subtracting to equal 2. At the end, I think, okay, which one is positive and which one is negative? But that's the last step. I first think two numbers that multiply to 24 and the same number subtract to what? So what are they? Okay, now the last step, Nancy, is I think, okay, because it's positive 2y, the bigger number has to be positive and the smaller number has to be negative and you're there, right? So the last step, tell me what y equals. What zero comes from y plus six? What zero comes from y subtract four? Done. Now, what am I gonna check? Are those b both good solutions? Excellent. Number six. Thank you, Nancy. Melissa. Melissa, can you tell me what we do first? Um, yeah, I like that. The exclude, right? Do you know what it means to exclude compared to include? You know when you exclude, it's when you're mean. You can't come to my birthday party. Include means that, yeah, of course you can come to my birthday party, right? Everyone's invited, right? That means you include. Exclude means, sorry, you can't come to the party. So what numbers can't come to the party? Any other numbers? Good. So you recognize this is a constant, so there's no zero, right, that comes from it? So do we know what include compared to exclude means? Yeah. Okay, what would you do to solve this? Or well, I can help you. Okay, you recognize we've done like a number of these, right? We're at number six. So the inverse of dividing is to multiply. So what would I multiply both sides by? Okay. And when I multiply by 2, the 2's would divide out, right? And we have 2 times 3. What else would you multiply by? So 
x plus 4. So I multiply both sides by x plus 4. I multiply both sides by 2, right, to undo the dividing. Are we together? Miss Melissa? Yeah. Excellent. You're going to do the next step. How do I multiply that? Do you want my help? No. Good. <laughs> Tell me the answer then. It's 2x squared. Excellent. Minus 4. Minus 4. Can, you ask me, can I ask you where you got minus 4? What happened? How did you get 5? By... Or did someone just tell you 5 and you're just saying it? Because someone in your group telling you stuff. Because I'm going to ask why if I think that someone just told you something. Why 5? Or you can say, I'm not sure. Can you help me? Because the whole point is learning this, right? Unless someone's always going to tell you the answer, whatever you do in life. You ready? Yeah. What's 4 times 2? Good. What's 1 times negative 3? So what the person did who told you is they went 8, take away 3. Do you see 8 and take away 3? What is that number? We still have something we're missing. What kind of 12? And on the right side, what does it equal? Excellent. Clarissa, what type of equation is this? Correct. How do I solve a quadratic? Make it equal to zero in factor or something else, right? So we're going to make it equal to zero. How do I do that? And what do you get? Excellent. You ready? All right, let's do this. There are still too many here that struggle factoring this. I'm not one to, f to give up. Do you know that? Like, I keep plugging away. I'll take three yards at a time until I get a first down. You know? I'll figure it out somehow. Clarissa, how do you feel about factoring this? Okay, so what should I do first? <coughs> what do you get? I got it. Tell me the two numbers that work. So 9 times negative 4 is, and 9 take away 4 is, perfect. Do you know the mistake someone makes here? Is they take this and then they do the factors right away, right? They go from this, and they go, oh yeah, and they do that. Do you notice now when it's a simple trinomial, I refuse to draw a diamond. Do you notice that? Because I'm hoping that when you draw a diamond, you realize it's going to take two more steps. And when you don't draw a diamond, it's just, it's there. Yes? So what do I write down next? Thank you, Clarissa. You are amazing, right? And that there are some still that refuse to do this step. They go right from the diamond, and they think the answer is x plus 4 and x take away 4, right? Or x plus 9, x take away 4. Can we avoid that mistake? All right, keep going, Clarissa. Right. I was almost going to make a mistake. You're right. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. You know what? We're there. So tell me the two solutions I can write down. What are the zeros? And positive two? Are they good solutions? Why? Perfect. Thank you. Good job. Turn the page. Number seven. So I'm going to do number seven. 
Number seven is different. I need you to have your spider sense. Do you see what's different about number seven than what we've done before? Yeah. This is not a proportion. A proportion is when you have one fraction equaling one fraction. Here, we have adding or subtracting of multiple, right, rationals. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to make common denominators and then solve the numerators. I'll do the first one. When I look at the denominators, I see 3n and 6. I need them all to be the same, so what do I multiply times to make them the same? So here I go. I look at the 3, and I go to the largest number, and I think, okay, first, is there something I can multiply to make it 6? If I can't, then i got to look at both the same time and think what number they both go into. But I can. So what do I multiply times so it makes it 6? 2. We're not done. Now I look at the other one, and it's what? N. So not only am I going to multiply it by 2, I'm going to multiply it by 2N. Next. I'm going to look at the next denominator. It must match the first one. What's missing that it needs so it can match the first denominator? So I'm going to multiply top and bottom times 6. And now look at the last denominator. It needs to match what's missing so it can match. So I multiply top and bottom times n. Now here's the good news. Once the denominators are the same, just write down the numerators. So the first numerator is 8n. And I made a mistake at the beginning, didn't I? Let me like, not do that. What's the only zero, right, from the bottom? 3 and 6, whatever, but n, what's the zero that comes from it? Right, we got to remember that. All right, let's go back. 6 times 7 is 42, and 1 times n is n. This, is this a quadratic equation? Is the degree of this 2? Do you see an exponent 2? No, this is called a linear. Do you solve it differently? Yes, you combine like terms and get n by itself. So to combine like terms, I'm going to subtract n to both sides. I'm going to add 42 to both sides. So 8 take away 1 is 7. And 0 plus 42 is 42. The last step, when you divide by 7, the answer is, is that a good solution? And you're done. All right, we're going to try number eight. So for number eight, it's not a proportion. We have multiple fractions. So we're going to make all the denominators the same. Cristobal, how do I make the denominators the same? What does the first denominator need that it doesn't have? Hmm? The first denominator, it needs something so it can match. You know what it's missing? A 2. So we're going to multiply top and bottom times 2. Keep going. Oops, that's a minus sign. So top and bottom times k, and 1 times k is k. What's the last one missing? So top and bottom times 2. Let me not make this mistake. At the beginning, what's the excluded value for k? Zero. Why we like right? We hesitate and it confuses me. If you see a monomial, what's the zero? If the monomial is a constant, there is no zero, right? But if the monomial is a variable, what's the zero? Chris Ball? Zero, right? No hes hesitation. All right. Do you see the denominators are the same? Yeah. Now I can write down only the numerators. What's two times three? Six. And then subtract. Okay. And then two times twelve. Is this a linear or a quadratic? Uh, these, these ones are either going to be linear or quadratic. Did you say it in a way like you're guessing or that you know? I don't want you to guess. I don't want to go to Vegas, right? I want to know that you don't see an exponent 2. If you see an exponent 2, do you see it? If you see an exponent 2 and it's the biggest exponent, it's called a... I don't see an exponent to. 
I don't even see anyone. That means the biggest exponent is? What's the biggest exponent on K right now? One. And if it's one, we say the degrees one is linear. <laughs> Simple. You ready? Do you see two as an exponent? No. You don't see one, but it's there, so it's linear. How do you solve a linear is to combine like? Terms. So how do I do that? Okay. So 24 take away 6. Is? Okay. Are we done? Okay. So I have to divide both sides by negative 1. So the answer is? Is that a good solution? Yes. Awesome. Let's look at number 9. Are we ready? I'm just looking at Anthony right now. He looks like he, you know, cute little. <laughs> That's good. Alyssa, are you in the mood? You can help me? All right, let's do this. Step one, I'm not going to make the mistake. Step one is... Can you tell me what P cannot equal? Okay. One, two. Yep. Is that the only number that P cannot be? Why did you say negative 2? So negative 2 squared subtract 4 also would be 0, right? What you might have to do is this. Before I can do this step, you might look. Is there anything factorable that you see? Like, does your spider sense go off now? And Oh, yeah, I see it. I see that all the time. I know I can factor it, right? What's factorable? And what would that be? Right? That different. Then you can see it's obvious, right, what the zeros of the denominator are. Because, Alyssa, you have good number sense. You had a sense, right, not by factoring. But you saw that there would be two numbers that could be zero. Excellent. Do you know what we do next? All right. Now, do you see the two? The denominator you don't see is one. So I need to make the denominators the same. Now, do we already know this? That when we make the denominators the same, I don't care about the denominators anymore. I only look at the numerators. So when I say, hey, what does the first denominator need? You're going to say what? P plus 2. I'm just going to go P times what? Because I'm not going to write the denominator because I don't need it. Yes? So why write it and do an extra step, right? So when I make the common denominator, I write down only the numerator. What does the second one need that it doesn't have? So it needs both, right, to match? And what number is in front? Ooh, a 2. And then what does the last one need that it doesn't have? Or is it good? So I just write down 8. Do you see how I took that one step away? That when we're making the denominators the same, I actually only care about the numerator, so I just wrote down the numerator. All right, keep going, Alyssa. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, okay, we're going to do this in two steps. What's P plus 2 times P take away 2? And then distribute. So I just did it in two steps. You could probably do it in your head. But I did the FOIL first then the 2, and make sure the 2 goes to both. So what do we have? Alyssa, well, what type of equation is this? It is. And to solve a quadratic, we're first going to make it equal to 0, and we have to combine like terms. So what should I write down? How many p squares do I have? So I write down 3. How many p's do I have? 
And then how do I combine 8 and negative 8? And what do you get? So first thing I look at, is there a number that goes into everything evenly to reduce it down? It's good practice. Is there a number that I can divide out? And the answer is no. But if you could, you can actually, in an equation, it just divides out. It's no more. It strikes out if there was a number. But there's not. I'm going to solve this by factoring. What should I do first? What's that? Mm -hmm. That's what I got. Now, are you going to make the mistake say, oh, it's P plus 8, P take away 6? Or are you going to do the steps now, right? So if I think, what are the steps? What am I going to substitute out? The 2P becomes what? What would you do next? So what would that be? Okay, and what am I left with? And then the next two? And you're left with? That's the, the indicator, isn't it? So when you do the work, they match, don't they? So that's equal to zero. So finish this off. One factor is 3p plus 8, and the other is p subtract 2. So the first 0 is 2, and the other one is subtract 8 and divide by 3. Now, what do I do next is I check, are these good solutions? So. The first one, positive 2, what do I do? That is called, what is the word we call that? An extra, right? Extraneous. So there's how many solutions here? Just one. And the only solution is negative 8 over 3. Why is 2 bad? Because it makes the denominator 0, which is undefined. Number 10. All right, Jocelyn, what would you do first? Um, I would multiply. Actually, yeah, so I want to see what W cannot be, right? I want to know the excluded values. Mm -hmm. Tell me uh, the zeros of the denominator, what it cannot be. Are you confused by the first denominator? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 3 so you can see it better. What makes the denominator 0? 1. And how about the next one? 1. And how about the next one? 0. Is this monomial a constant or is there a variable? Constant. A constant is constant. It will never change. Will that ever be zero? No. It's nine, forever. So what are the only two that could become zero? One. And we just write it down once. We don't need to write down the number multiple times. We got it? Yeah. All right, We next step is we're going to make common denominators. So can you look at the denominators right now? What does the first one need so it can match? That's it, right? It already has a W subtract 1. It just needs to become 9. So I'm going to take 3. I'm only going to look at the numerator. Is that all right? Yeah. What does the next denominator need that it doesn't have so it can match? Uh, nine. So I'm going to multiply by 9. What does the last one need? So, you one. so it doesn't have a W subtract 
1. So it needs to be multiplied by that. So now all the denominators are the same, and I only look at the numerators. All right, Jocelyn, what would you do next? Um, multiply 3 times 13 is 19. Wait, no, wait. This is 9. 20, 90, 90, wait. I'm waiting. <laughs> this is 3 is 9. So, yeah, 39. Correct. Keep going. And then negative 9. Yep. Equals W squared minus W. Got it. What type of equation is this? Quadratic. How do you solve a quadratic? Um, you saying you're making it equal to zero in factoring? Yeah. Let's do it. Now the power term we want to stay positive, right? What's thirty nine take away thirty? So what are you subtracting? 30. Is this a simple trinomial? Yeah. So I'm not going to draw a diamond. I'm going right into it, right? The other one, when I draw a diamond, we have like two, two more steps, right? This one is one, done, it's simple. Tell me the two numbers that multiply to negative 30 six. and subtract to one. W plus six and W minus five. Careful, is W negative or positive? Oh. The bigger number needs to be negative and positive. Tell me the solutions, the zeros that come from that. Six and negative five. What do I check at the end? The yeah, is it are they excluded values? No. So that's good and it's over. If that one was, what would you have to do? Cross it out and it's called extraneous. Extraneous? Did I say it right? Extraneous. All right, two more. Number 11. All right, Rosie, are you ready to help me? No, I don't get it. Awesome. You know what? My heart just got happy. Not because you don't get it, because I did the right thing to find someone to help. You know, if I only ask someone who knows what they're doing and they just brag all the way down, no one's learning, right? And they feel bad. The other ones, they aren't getting it. But you, you'll make sure I don't go too fast. You'll make sure you ask a question, right? for each step. So thank goodness I picked you. Here we go. Step one. I, if you know, or you can say, I'm not sure. Can you help me with the first step? Yes. <laughs> Tell me what X cannot be. Good. Any other numbers? No. Good. Next. Yeah, so you know what's good about this question? Is that two denominators are exactly the same. What's the one denominator that I need to be worried about? Right? So the first denominator, in other words, all denominators are going to be x plus 3, so they can all be the same. So the first one can stay the same, so I don't change the numerator. It stays the same. I didn't change anything. What do I need to multiply the second denominator by? So they're the same. And what do I do to the bottom? I need to do to the top. And I'm only going to write down the top because that's what I'm solving. And then what else do I write down? Now, I'm going to tell you, because it would be easy to make a mistake here, that put parentheses around the 5x plus 12. It doesn't feel like it, but that subtract sign belongs to both. And if you put parentheses around it, Maybe it reminds you that it belongs to both. What type of equation is this? It is. You know how to solve a linear? Yeah, distribute, combine like terms, get x by itself. Let's do it. Tell me what I should do first. All right, so I see parentheses, so I'm going to take care of that first. So how do I distribute? And? Excellent. I like how you remembered to distribute. Next, what would you do? Go for it. Yes? Yes. Keep going.
Nope. Oh, no. I want to combine like terms to get x by itself. Next step. I'm listening. Can you take out three? What, what did you do? Um, factor out three. Nope, we're not factoring. We're just combining. It means we're just adding or subtracting at this point. But what are we adding? What are we subtracting? Negative six. <coughs> hmm? Negative six. Okay, what do you want to add that to? So, at this point, Rosie, usually, I first combine the variables together, first. So, what I see is, if I want to combine them together, that means I try to look at the number that's smaller, and negative 3 is smaller, and I work with it. So, the inverse of subtracting 3x is to add 3x. Yes? And that 1 plus 3 is... And then, to get x by itself, I don't want plus 6 beside the x. So the inverse of adding 6 is 2. And negative 6, subtract 6 is negative. And then what's the last step? When you divide by 4? Check. Is that good or bad? That's called... What answer? I know, I struggle too. Extraneous? Hey, do you know the people that love doing this for zero? You know those people? And I get like mad about it because it doesn't mean it? This symbol means no solution. Empty set, no solution. That symbol means no solution. Zero is not the same as no solution. Zero is a solution, correct? So if you want to use that symbol, like Saturn or whatever, that's when you can use it. Hey. Well, on the left side it is plus six, so the inverse of adding is to subtract. If I added six, then the x's and the constant would be beside each other, and I'd still have more work to get x by itself. Yay? So, hey, we learned something. Saturn. Do you see Saturn? <laughs> when do I do Saturn? Well, there's no solution. Do you use it for zero? No. no, no, no. Here we go. One more left. Sarah. You ready? I guess. Let's do this. You know, I have a Sarah on my new soccer team. So, there you go. Yeah. Cool, right? Yeah. Twelve. No Dahlia. Too bad, right? Do you think you look like you could be six or seven years old? No. Dang. Okay, no ringers. <laughs> Twelve. Help me out. I'm going to help you out. You ready? Step one in this case is to factor so I can understand this. Okay? So fa is there anything factorable that you see? Um, yeah, what would it be? C factor out of C yeah. and C, C subtract four. Mm -hmm. And then... Tell me the zeros of the denominator. Um, four and yep. Zero. Good. So C by itself, the zero is zero. C subtract four, the zero is positive four. You don't see it, but what's denominators here on the right side? One. And a constant doesn't have a zero. All right, Sarah, what would you do next? Good. I want all the denominators to be the same. So, if they're all going to be the same, is the first denominator missing anything? What is the second one missing? So, in other words, I'm going to write down 3c subtract 2. It's not changing. What does the second one need? So, I'm going to multiply the numerator by c. Is that right? And then what's the, what's the last one needing that it needs? And? Well, we're going to do that next step. But it's missing a C and a C subtract 4. So now the denominators are the same. Now, at this point, you may not see it, or maybe you do. What type of equation is this? Well, let's try it. Let's see, okay? Because it's hard to see right now. And it, we're solving for C. I heard that dinging. C times C? Thomas? 
Keep going. Thomas just needs to like have his A game. Keep going. No, you're not doing it. You just need to pay attention and do the work. Sarah, keep going. Then? Excellent job distributing, right? So what do you notice about the C squares? Oh, so it's negative C times 4, which would be positive 4C. Good eyes. Good distributing, right? What happens to the C squares? So it actually is not a quadratic, but it was hard to see, right? So now to solve this, we're not going to make it equal to 0 in factor. To solve it, we're going to combine like terms and then make sure, right, that the solution's good. Keep going. Okay, so subtract 3c, and that's it, right? Now, what do you do at the end? <laughs> what do we, wait, it's not excluded, it's not extraneous, right? So that's a good solution. Good solutions are good solutions. Hey, we just did a lesson on solving rational equations. Mr. G. Math. Mr. G. Math. Thank you.